mountains and trees and people and walls and all anything and everything could be uh, permanent. And it's very difficult to overcome the cultural conditioning uh, that, let me just say it's very difficult. But on the other hand, a number of people in the West who have, uh, who are interested in spirituality or particularly Tibetan Buddhism have an enormous history in previous lives uh, in oriental systems that perhaps in this life, this may be an early or maybe even your first life uh, that you were born uh, as a Western person. And people such as this, when they hear about the teachings of impermanence, uh, and uh, uh, selflessness, uh, they go, thank God. <laughs> it's a funny thing to say with a permanent God. But thank God, thank God that I, 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 this, this, I, this I understand. This I can relate to. And their cultural conditioning regarding all of these other elements just completely falls away. And it's like a breath of air, and inside and out you feel... I don't have to struggle. I don't have to struggle to try to, uh, to, try to adapt to a system that, I, that somehow inside I don't feel comfortable with. And so, and so many different teachings uh, to help people adapt, adapt their lives to an oriental system while they still live in a Western context. And uh, in that way, the teachings of altruism uh, become uh, are, are, are a lovely entry point uh, for people who are adapting their lives. And the outcome of altruism actually works very nicely when you think about multiple lives. You think about an enormous project that we are working on, which is an awakening, something that is very difficult to make it happen within the context of a single lifetime, and therefore that you came from somewhere, you came into this world with tendencies which were inculcated uh, in, from some previous lifetime, in some previous lifetime, and you are now still in process. And uh, in this way, the vast altruistic uh, uh, idea is it, it, not about me anymore. It's not about my soul, or it's not about uh, it's not about you know this. Uh, I'll meet my family in heaven, and a lot of the um, uh, other more Western uh, uh, adaptations of what happens after after death. And in that way, the mind begins to naturally expand. And this is the expansive mind, uh, which is acknowledged in the, all of the Buddhist uh, all of the Buddhist teachings. We think about all living beings, beings on other planets, beings who are not like us, people who are not like us, uh, animals, uh, scary animals, lovely animals, puppies and kittens and alligators and all of them. Uh, that animals that we would like to save and animals we would like to see gone from this world. And so there's a, there's a, there is a tremendous relaxation of our barriers between ourself and others. And we begin to accept others, uh, not as an extension of me, but having value in their own right. And this, of course, is a... Uh, is the Mahayana uh, in a very small nutshell. That this feeling of expansion relaxes our consciousness and it makes us receptive to learning those pieces of this vast puzzle, not just the puzzle of who am I, but this vast puzzle of what is, the, what is phenomena and what is the, what is the purpose of phenomena. And uh, when will phenomena end? And, and will I end when all phenomena ends? And these kinds of questions 
which could not occur under that other com cultural context, become very natural. I am in a different place in my inquiry about existence and worldview and consciousness and expansion and, and the possibilities and what is my potential? What is my potential here? Will I gain my potential in my birth culture? And there are lots of Western people who say, I can't. I can't do it within my culture. And they leave. There are lots of Western people living in India in monasteries and around monasteries as lay people, people who have disappeared. I mean, <laughs> as far as Western people, they've disappeared off the face of the earth. But there they are in a culture which they feel much more comfortable with. You're now no longer bound by your own culture, but very often you have to go away from your own culture in order to find where you really belong. And since we probably have already been born into these many cultures over previous lifetimes, which one are we emphasizing in this life? Am I more like a, more like a person from Sri Lanka? Am I more like someone from Texas? Am I more like someone from South Africa? I, we have a freedom in our modern world and our Western culture even though I'm talking about some things which create boundaries, uh, that, that we can break those boundaries. And when we have a great interest in Buddhism, that part of that is breaking the boundaries of, who at, of how we're able to think. And of course, our, our topic here is right thought. <laughs>